Hi everyone, welcome to the next section, Topic Modeling and Sentiment Analysis in NLP. In this section, we're going to discuss latent semantic analysis, one of the most famous methods. We'll also discuss its probabilistic variant, PLSA, Probabilistic Latent Semantic Analysis. And finally, we will look at latent Dirichlet allocation. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with latent semantic analysis. In this video, we're going to learn about latent semantic analysis and look at an example based on a subset of Brown corpus. The main goal of topic modeling in natural language processing is to analyze a corpus in order to identify common topics among documents. In this context, even if we talk about semantics, this concept has a particular meaning, driven by a very important assumption. In other words, if we don't consider a human-oriented semantics, but a statistical modelling that works with meaningful documents, this guarantees that the usage of terms is aimed to express a particular concept, and therefore there's a human semantic purpose behind them. For this reason, the starting point of all our methods is an occurrence matrix, normally defined as a document term matrix. Latent semantic analysis. The idea behind latent semantic analysis is factorizing, MDW, so as to extract a set of latent variables. This means that we can assume their existence, but they cannot be observed directly, that work as connectors between the document and terms. However, we're not interested in a full decomposition. We're interested only in the subspace defined by the top K singular values. This approximation has the reputation of being the best one, considering the Frobenius norm, so it guarantees a very high level of accuracy. When applying it to a document term matrix, we obtain this decomposition. Or, in a more compact way, here the first matrix defines a relationship among documents and K latent variables, and the second a relationship among K latent variables and words. Considering the structure of the original matrix and what is explained at the beginning of this video, we can consider the latent variables as topics that define a subspace where the documents are projected. Furthermore, each topic becomes a linear combination of words. As the weight of many words is close to zero, we can decide to take only the top R words to define a topic. Therefore, we get Here, each HJI is obtained after sorting the columns of MTWK. Let's understand the process. Let's show a complete example based on a subset of Brown Corpus. It has 500 documents from the news category. We first import it and then add the code. Oh, this is due to wrong indentation. We fix it. After defining the corpus, we tokenize and vectorize it using a TFIDF approach. So, we first import the TFID vectorizer. Now it's possible to apply an SVD to the XC matrix. So, we first import SVD and then apply it. As the corpus is not very small, it's useful to set the parameter full matrices equals false to save computational time. We assume we have two topics, so we can extract our sub-matrices. So, let's import MP and run this code. We get an error. Let's debug it. We change V to initial case and the error vanishes. If we want to analyze the top 10 words per topic, we need to consider that M of TWK is equal to V of K. Therefore, we can obtain the most significant words per topic after sorting the matrix using the get feature names method provided by the vectorizers. In this case, we're considering only non-negative values in the matrix VK. However, 
As a topic is a mixture of words, the negative components should also be taken into account. In this case, we need to sort the absolute values of VK. If we want to analyse how a document is represented in this subspace, we must use this formula. Let's consider, for example, the first document of our corpus. We print corpus. Then we run this line. Once this is done, we print this line. As anticipated, the standard SciPy SVD implementation can be really slow when the occurrence matrix is huge. However, Scikit-learn provides a truncated SVD implementation. Truncated SVD works only with the subspace. The result is much faster. It can directly manage sparse matrices too. Let's repeat the previous experiments with a complete corpus using this truncated SVD class. Then we define truncated SVD and get the result. Through the N components parameter, it is possible to set the desired rank, discarding the remaining parts of the matrices. After fitting the model, we get the document topic matrix MDTK directly as the output of the method fit underscore transform while the topic word matrix, MTWK, can be accessed using the instance variable components. We then add this part of code. The reader can verify how much faster this process can be. Therefore, I suggest using a standard SVD implementation only when it's needed to have access to the full matrices. Unfortunately, this method is very sensitive to the algorithm and the random state, it also suffers from a phenomenon called sign indeterminacy, which means that the signs of all components can change if a different random seed is used. I suggest you declare these two lines. Do this with a fixed seed at the beginning of every file, even Jupyter Notebooks, to be sure that it's possible to repeat the calculations and always obtain the same result. That's all about latent semantic analysis.